Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update. Well, kind of, sort of, maybe this video is a little bit different. I'm going to take the comments that I received in the video yesterday, and some of them are very hard hitting. I'm going to answer them to the best of my ability with the knowledge that I have now. And it's in regards to the flare airdrop. So JC Collins, who is at Higher Manus on Twitter, created a poll with an option for flare distribution. As you know, there has been a couple of proposals put out there by Flare Networks. So far, 5,227 votes. Pretty good for just a 24-hour poll thus far. 11.5% of those that participated want option one, that is the buy-through burn option. 37.8% are going with option two. That is where the distribution of the Spark token will halt with a total distribution of 15 billion. And then 50.7% want option three, and that is to stick to the original plan. So let me run through some of these questions that I received or even just comments and uh, allow me to respond. The first one is that I'm a paid agent by Ripple and that I can even make farts smell good. Well, wow, that's ridiculous. And it's not relevant to this Flare situation. Flare has built a platform that is even a rival to the proposed side chains by Ripple. And if you look, Flare wrote a paper on how it could even secure the side chains in a trustless manner. Manner. So they are really two different entities with uh, two different goals, okay? Flare Networks has its own set of investors. Yeah, Ripple was one, but one of many. And if I was an agent, uh, I wouldn't have spent more than $2,000 on a trip to Singapore swell, which never realized because I didn't have enough months left on my passport. And I can show you the receipts of that payment. So those kinds of comments are just utterly ridiculous. Next one, Flare is more trouble than it's worth. Uh, yeah, okay, I understand. Governance does take work and it takes work in the way of research. And it's okay, some people don't enjoy research. Question number three, Flare is a scam, no intention of honoring. Flair is honoring the 15% distribution and should the self-governing holders of Flair vote to make changes, so be it. Yes, I understand the five month period to come to this consensus is a change. Uh, it feels disappointing because of the delay in the initial schedule of distribution. I completely understand your feel, but it is not a scam. Can Flare legally change the arrangement? Well, nobody has entered into a legal contract. Flare keeps causing delays. The delay of launch, if the mainnet does go live in July, is due to security audits. They are so, so, so important. Once live, all changes have to go through a vote. The last thing I want to be doing is voting on some fix. Isn't the distribution based on snapshot dated on 12? Oh, it should be 1212. 12. Yeah, 2020? Yes, distribution is based on the snapshot taken on that date. And there is a proposal to change the amount of total tokens and the schedule beyond the initial 15%. The proposals were put out there because there are some very vocal community members, very uncomfortable with the IRS in the US not having clearly defined tax implications for this airdrop. This airdrop is totally unique. And I think that even those that have reached out to the IRS and haven't received any information back, um, it, it's, it's for a lot of people um, difficult to go into a dark room and try to find the door, right? Uh, next question or comment. It's a very weak excuse for 
Flare Networks to use this tax issue. Well, the tax concerns, again, came from a number of very vocal people, many of which have a large following. And I think that they were swaying their influence. And it was, I think, for sure, I, I believe, Flair was trying to come up with a solution to help ease some of those concerns, or at least to make some options available. Next, how many spark holders are outside the US and why are others penalized? I don't know that we know exactly how many are outside the US. I can 100% feel, again, your feel on this as an American, even though my permanent residency is in Japan, I'm sorry for the delay that's being caused by what seems to be mostly people in the United States. Next one, not sure it is possible for me, talking about me, to be unbiased. I can tell you that there's a person in my life who taught me a very important way to approach any issue. And it is to remain without opinion, be able to argue both sides of any issue or argument equally, and then be completely in a full understanding of why there is a difference of opinion. So I'm taking that same approach on this situation. Eventually, I know I have to take a position because I only have one vote, but I am still in that phase or process of really being able to understand all of the possible potential options that we have. I don't rush come, coming to a decision. That's really what I learned from the person who taught me that lesson. Next, why is paying tax on something you get free a problem? Mm, many people have that same opinion. I happen to agree. I happen to agree. Next, seems like a rug pull. Well, there's no rug to pull on this. There is no money invested here, except, except, and I understand, for those who have sold their IOUs. So should the option to be adopted, the distribution halt after 15 billion, yeah, could be problematic for those individuals. I have a lot of what I would call uh, close Twitter friends who are in that position. They know who they are because we've been talking about that. Uh, this is a high risk space. And, well, this is a high risk space. Perfect example of why democracies don't work. That was a comment. Yeah, it's tough, right? Some voices are louder than others. And sometimes those loud voices are not always, always correct or always true to what is best for everyone? I, I don't know. Sometimes we experience bullying too, right? I think DAI, he believes he's a victim of what he's saying is cancel, cancel culture. Having different opinions is messy. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't think there is a perfect... <laughs> structure to govern out there in the world. Uh, I wish there was, but um, democracies seem to be, uh, at least on an ideological point of view, one of the best. Mm, I hope that we can attain uh, the best for everyone through that system, but I know it's messy. All right, next, giving up 5% of your XRP to participate has never made sense to me. That was never part of the rules to give up 5% of your XRP. So I'm not sure, maybe I misunderstand that comment. And then I have TZ. TZ is the toughest, not the one of two of the toughest in my comment section. Oh, hi, Momo. Uh, that... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know why TZ, I don't block you because, <laughs> but I don't block you because you're always a, 
a voice that is uh, from the opposite side of where mine is. So that's why I don't block you. <laughs> You're tough. So you said that uh, flair has now divided the community. Well, yes, I agree. However, the governance style of projects like this will always have opposing sides. And this community has gone through multiple <laughs> divisions. I don't want to bring them up because that just brings up old wounds. But I mean, you can look at some of the theories that have been floated out there, like pre-allocation or the 589, and look what the bear cartoon did. <laughs> so all I can say is from a Japanese perspective, there are some disciplines here in this country like karate and ikebana and, and tea ceremony that have severe divisions of community. So if you are going to be someone who studies tea ceremony, for example, you have to choose which school of tea ceremony you want to align yourself with. And if you align yourself with this style of sensei or teacher, well, then you are denouncing another style or sensei out there, thus providing this huge division within communities within just an artistic discipline of tea ceremony, which is so beautiful, but still really nasty divisions have occurred. And I think, look at karate, look at, look at Kyokushin, Kyokushin karate, even within, so karate has different disciplines, right? And even within Kyokushin, you have a division, a split. And yeah, I think this is the nature of communities, good or bad. I'm sure that if you follow that advice that I received, you would be able to argue both sides of whether it is good or bad equally to be a true intellectual. All right, next one. This is BS. Give us all our spark tokens. <laughs> I, I like this kind of, <laughs> I like this. Yeah, that is a proposal that you can put out there as a flare holder. So if you feel like just give me all my tokens, <laughs> That is a proposal, and I'm being serious. Flair said that they would give Spark to the Litecoin community. No, that was never said. Maybe it was a rumor that took on a life of its own. That happens a lot in this space, not just the XRP community. It happens a lot in the entire cryptocurrency space. Non-US investors feel victimized. Again, uh, yeah, I, I hear you. The squeaky wheels tend to get the grease. That is a saying that bears a lot of truth. And I think it played out in this particular situation. Next, why is there an issue? You are getting the tokens for free. Paying taxes governed by each recipient's country is just a given. Well, I, I, I can agree. Yeah, but it is also very important to keep in mind that Jungle Inc., who is a tax guy, he says that the 15% initial drop is not a slam dunk for it being zero tax. And he is pointing to this obscure issue with the hard forks that no trading uh, is done until the fork takes place. Like remember when there was the big split in August with BCH and Bitcoin, uh, they took that day one trading price with that fork. So yeah, we don't have, we really don't have for this situation that is completely unique. We don't have 100% ironclad tax rules. So there is always going to be opinions and interpretations and those are obviously going to differ. Yeah, and I know that a lot of people felt concerned because they don't want to be like Ripple in the case of whether they asked for clarification, were never given clarification, and then eight years later, they find themselves in a lawsuit for breaking a securities law. So I, I'm sure a lot of people don't have a lot of trust in the IRS to not do the same sort of monkey business. 
You should be slamming the flare people, Eddie. Very disappointed in you. Hmm. I don't think slamming flare for this uh, is proper because they were trying to solve a concern that many vocal people felt uh, in regards to the tax. So I think it's the IRS, the tax people who define our rules should be slammed. These proposals are there out there with an attempt to help. That is really what the proposals are. And as a flare holder, you have, you have the power to vote and give it a thumbs down or give it a thumbs up or make a new proposal. And so I think forcing tax on a community without the, bil without the ability or option to change uh, was considered. And so maybe that is really the driving reason for these proposals. I mean, in a, in a, in a democracy, you want to have options right being being told what to do from a centralized authority is the last thing that we should have to succumb to and uh this is one of the reasons why i really am in love with the decentralized space because even though the democracy and the self-governance is very difficult it is much better than being told what to do by a centralized authority who can do anything they want to do. Next one, cool head? I don't think so. Okay, so I put that everyone should have a cool head. Well, I try to keep a cool head. And uh, a lot of you know that I have gone off on Twitter. And each time I do that, I have a bad feeling. Um, I want to learn from those experiences and try not to re repeat those same regrets that I have when I do do that. So Maybe when I talk about keeping a cool head, I'm really talking to myself. So the voting methodology has been updated. Let me just show you that in case you didn't catch it. And I'm going to move myself out of the way here. So the options one and two that are out there are based on a super majority requiring 66% of a positive vote in order for it to pass. Option three, because of its default setting, will be based on a simple majority of 50% to pass. Um, yeah, 66% is not that high, actually, because um, look at the taproot, which was the upgrade for Bitcoin. It needed a 90% uh, green light from the miners. That was a high percentage. So. I think that's a very fair percentage. And even though it's being called the supermajority, uh, well, I guess if you can get 66% of the holders to actually participate, well, yeah, I mean, 66% agree who are participating, that will be uh, amazing. All right, continuing on, all options will require a participation rate of at least 30% of eligible flair holders to pass. Okay, so 30%. So that means 70% just sit on the sidelines and don't do anything. Do, do, do you think that is, wow, yeah, apathy it was a word I learned when I was taking sociology in high school. I can remember my class that coming across that word for the first time. It was a changing moment for me when it was explained the repercussions of what apathy does in this world. Flare Network's limited founders and employees will not be voting and hence will be removed from the eligibility calculation. Okay, I think that, that's good. The Flare Foundation is not allowed to vote and hence will be in the eligibility calculation. Okay. Uh, the flare held in minting pools isn't allowed or isn't owned by anyone, sorry, and is therefore excluded from the eligibility calculation. Okay. Flare holders can vote on each option. So right now there are three options out there. And uh, the first option is 
Uh, the first option to pass will win, hence the vote will be finished well before the five-month deadline. If no option passes, the default defined above will automatically take effect, and that's where that five-month period of time is put into place, which is, uh, yeah, which is uh, going to give the exchanges a chance to really get their ducks in a row to decide how they want to handle the token. Uh, this structure ensures that the original distribution plan is retained unless there is a strong desire among spark holders to change the distribution to option one or option two. And this governance vote, this governance vote does not have an impact on the operation of the FTSO or F asset protocol. That's really good too. All right, everybody, that's all I have for you today. Yeah, I'm not going to do fluff. This was more of a serious video, and it is an unusual video, but I felt like it was important to do it this way. And I do want to tell you, I'm working on some other stuff for another video later on. So until then, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye bye.